You guys were asking for some more behind the scenes footage and today I had to go fix up a PC. Apparently it might have a broken motherboard. Sold it a few months ago, but we'll go check that out. And I've got to go pick up some cases as well, some RGB cases. Because all that stuff I got in the parts hunt, got to start building out some gaming PCs. And there's also someone else that wants me to check out their 1080 Ti that apparently could be broken as well. So it's not always smooth sailing when it comes to selling gaming PCs. You got to go fix up some problems sometimes. So let's go see what the road has to show. So that problem ended up being a lot easier than I thought. And one way you can tell what the problem is is by looking at the, I guess, the whole PC plugged up to whatever it's plugged up to. So if you're turning on a PC and it's cycling to Windows but there's no signal and the mouse and keyboard are lighting up and you know the GPU is good, then usually it's another problem outside of the PC. And that's what I did initially. I turned the power button off and then it takes a few seconds to cycle down, which means it went to Windows and was able to shut down fine. Anyway, I took it out, I reseated the CPU because I just wanted to make it look like it was a hardware problem. And what it actually was, was I think just on the back of their monitor, they had their Xbox plugged up and all they needed to do was hit the input source button and, uh, <laughs> and then that changed it over to the display port and then I was like, okay, cool. But uh, anyway, that's not a problem. That's one problem down, it ended up costing nothing, which is the best outcome. But from here on in, we're gonna go collect those cases, but I'm also gonna to talk to the guy I'm getting the cases from about GPU prices a little bit, see what the market's like, and see what prices he can do for me as well. It's always just one of those curiosity things when you're out on the road. And we have now fast forwarded a week later during a vlog and I got a haircut, things are a bit different. <laughs> I've got to actually get something ready really soon. So this PC right here, uh, it was the Age of Empires 4 PC we did yesterday, but they were like, look, I want an Nvidia graphics card. And so they asked for options, what can you do for me? So yeah, we've got that one ready to flip very soon. So we're gonna get about 800 Aussie dollars for that. And so that's what I mean when I put the prices out on the video, because I think people yesterday are like, I can't get these prices for these parts. And a, a lot of people can't get a lot of these prices, especially online, because the ease of buying online has become more and more in demand. And so that's one thing, if you look at the hustle right, locally, you're going to get better deals even now than you ever did in the past, because a lot more people are online looking for stuff. So. Even though you look at the eBay prices, you've got to try and get those deals locally because it's going to be so much better. It's getting such a big difference to the point where I don't even look on eBay for used parts. I used to actually scroll through and look for a lot of motherboards, a lot of GPUs, uh, you know, CPUs as well. You could sometimes find some bargains, but I pretty much go online now just to buy Xeon stuff and some of that sort of other stuff that's not mainstream. But in terms of the GPUs especially, getting local deals is gonna be so much better. And uh, this PC right here, it's a flip, it's gonna happen very soon. And then we've got right here two builds that I gotta quickly whip up. One is gonna be a just H55 GTX 570 PC. And this thing, believe it or not, people, some people just want a gaming PC to play, uh, what is it, Roblox? I think it's Roblox. And so they don't really care as long as they can get it for a real cheap price. So. Some of this stuff here, it's like those off deals that you get thrown in with the bigger deals, and then that can help. Um, it just it just helps. So that's one thing to never overlook when you're buying bulk. If you can get some of this stuff for really cheap, which in the case of the GTX 570, it was thrown in with those uh, HD 7970s when I did that uh, full when I found that new supplier, and so I can now utilize that, and it works. I've tested it out; works absolutely fine. 
Uh, this one here is a 7970 I'm gonna to put together with an i5-7500, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, so that'll be a little bit more expensive, but they're two builds I've just mapped out. I gotta whip them up. And uh, right behind that is the big boy. This thing right here is apparently Australian exclusive and got this for 99 Aussie dollars. So if you guys are looking for an alternative, finally, to the Datavac, well, this thing is actually not just an alternative. It has so much more power than the Datavac. It's probably almost twice as powerful as the Datavac. It's, it's actually pretty crazy. So <laughs> that one, I'm just giving it a whirl right now and seeing if, if it saves me time and it doesn't damage any parts, then I'll keep it around. So that's sort of like what I do behind the scenes is I'll trial things out. And if they work, then I can potentially make a video on this unit right here. But one thing I will say about this unit right here is I do have to wear earmuffs when I'm using it. It is pretty loud. So that's, uh, I guess, one drawback, but it does feel like it's actually better built than the Datavac. Also, I was talking about before we switched fast forward a week, there was someone I was gonna go see about a GTX 1080 Ti, and then they were busy that night, and then sometimes you're just like, there's a miss, and then there's another miss, followed by another miss, and so I'm gonna finally get around to that and just go visit them today and see what's wrong with their 1080 Ti, document it for you guys as well, because this is just everyday problems that happen, and so I like to address that stuff as well. So there's also another problem that happened, which we'll talk about very soon, but let's get one problem done, then we'll talk about the next one, which has to do with the monitor, and so, and it has to do with warranty too, because a lot of people actually ask us about warranty. So that's an interesting thing that we can talk about. But it's also in the morning and I gotta have a shower, but before I have a shower, gonna hit a quick tech yes workout. Wake up sleepy wide awake. So I just finished up at that person's house with the GTX 1080 Ti and I kind of went into it when they told me the symptoms starting out. I went in kind of having an idea of what it would have been and my guess was right on. It was a, essentially they got a 1080 Ti off marketplace and it's used, but then it started crashing in superposition. So superposition, you can set it to 1080p for extreme, for example, and it puts a very heavy load on the GPU. So it was crashing in that benchmark, but it wasn't crashing in the Unigine Heaven benchmark. I thought that was interesting because that tells you the graphics card is pretty much teetering on the line of its uh, out of the box default speeds not working properly. So when I downloaded Afterburner, I straight away dropped the memory speeds down and then I that, that fixed it. As soon as that happened, it fixed the graphics card. It was working fine, but of course, going inwards since you cannot update a nvidia graphics card with a flash you have to pretty much manage those default settings so what you do then is uh, you have to install afterburner and have it run as the pc boots up and pretty much for the rest of the life of the card so he decided that he's going to put that 1080 on his main rig and then keep on doing other stuff but i got rewarded for doing that and for helping that person out i ended up getting rewarded with some goodies, some used bangers. And I got a GTX 960, I got a uh, a couple of like i3 fourth gen builds with crap in it. And then there's also another build in there. I think it was like a first or a second gen. And then I got some also some old potato graphics card as well. So that's what you do, man. You just, you just help people out and they'll help you out in return. So he was very grateful that his uh, $700 Aussie uh, 1080 Ti didn't end up being a complete hose job, so he's really grateful for that. Anyhow guys, we're gonna get back to the Tech Yes studio and then build up those PCs. 
So we just got back now and we've finished off two builds. We're gonna immediately put one of those up for sale because my kind of rule of thumb is I always like to have a gaming PC up for sale. And that way, of course, you can uh, get interest and keep flipping. Now, warranty is an interesting thing. Uh, a few people ask me about this in the comments from time to time. And I've actually had uh, one case as we saw at the start of the video. And then yesterday, someone uh, messaged me about a monitor having a bad spot on it. And this is where if you guys are selling PCs, especially gaming PCs, always if it's a local deal, people come in to check it out, you show them the gaming PC, make sure it's up and running before you sell it, but also show them the gaming PC up and running so that if they go do something to that PC, then it's kind of on them. Like in the case of the monitor, that was a perfectly working monitor. It came out of here with no issues and they must have damaged it on the way back to their house or dropped it or something like that. And then one of the patches is blown out on the LEDs. And so when it comes to guaranteeing that, I'm just gonna be like, well, that's sort of like out of warranty, right? Natural occurring warranty sort of issues happen when uh, say for instance, a PC doesn't start anymore or something happens and a part goes faulty. The most common for me is actually faulty memory followed by a faulty motherboard. So that's how it usually goes in that order. Faulty GPUs, if that's within warranty, then that's a real, that one sucks the most because you have to replace the graphics card. That can be, at this point in time, it's really tedious. So make sure you, if you're doing those uh, gaming PCs, make sure the graphics card you're putting in there, one way to check, as we've talked about in previous videos, is you just uh, open up MSI Afterburner, you can quickly check how much headroom that GPU has. If it's got a little bit of headroom, it's usually fine. So if it's got like, if you just up the slider 10 megahertz on either core clock or memory, for instance, and then it's like artifacting and stuff like that, then uh, perhaps that GPU is close to its end anyhow. So there's a lot of different things involved, but the most important thing you can do is circle back to that making a gaming PC that works and then showing that it works before it leaves. And then of course, if something does naturally happen, one of those faulty occurrences that isn't the person's fault, then you, you just replace that. And that's sort of part of doing business. But in this case, uh, the first problem ended up being user error, which in that case, I'm happy to go help the first time. But if they keep sort of making mistakes, another very common one is someone will go and uh, pretty much install a heap of crap and make the windows corrupt and then you've got to go and reinstall Windows for them. So usually I give, if it's their fault and it's just a user error, I usually fix it up the first time for free, but then if they keep doing that stuff, then you'd be like, well, I have to charge you for my time because this isn't my fault. It's not the computer's fault. It's not the part's fault. But then you do come across parts that do become faulty from time to time. But usually you run those stress tests before you sell the PC and you check for that. And it's actually a very small chance that parts do go faulty in gaming PCs. And the funny thing I find about used parts is a lot of the older stuff was made with a lot of good componentry on it. So it usually has a very long life installed for a lot of these used parts. Anyhow guys, with that aside, hope you enjoyed today's behind the scenes vlog. I guess it's kind of the stuff that no one really talks about in the tech scene, but it's kind of the stuff that a lot of us do do, especially if you are selling gaming PCs. And also you guys said in the comments you want to see more of this behind the scenes stuff. So definitely happy to deliver content that you guys want to see. So with that aside, hope you enjoyed this one. Please hit that like button if you did. And also if you stayed this far, hit the sub button and ring that bell. But we've also got the question of the day here, which comes from Compact 23 And they asked, do my eyes deceive me? Am I seeing the best bang for the buck? Tech Yes Man finally back in our time of need. So that uh, yesterday's video with the Age of Empires 4 gaming PC, that was, I, I looked back at it after I edited the video out. I'm like, yeah, this is really good value for money. And then I looked on eBay after I'd uploaded the video at the prices of the 7970s and stuff. And that's sort of like, when I look at that and I get back and circa back to the local deals, it's kind of like the, the contrast is getting massive. So if you are in a good area with PC parts, used PC parts seen, definitely stay on that and try and get those deals. And you can make up good gaming PCs, you can service your local market, they can save money on their gaming PCs, you make a bit of profit in the process, everybody's happy when this happens. But those eBay prices, man, they're pretty scary for some of those parts. So definitely gonna be sticking more local than I ever have 
and uh, hoping that more of those deals come up. Anyhow, guys, I'll keep you posted. In the meantime, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.